My friends, you're going to have a great understanding of the compression factor and how it relates to real gases in thermodynamics. I've spent a ton of time making this video, so you're really going to understand this by the end. It's a short video, and I really hope you get some value from it. Just note I got tons of other videos on thermo as well. Now, we're going to compare perfect and real gases. So for a perfect gas, our equation of state is PV equals NRT. For a real gas, it's PV, also PV equals NRT. We could model it that way, except with this compression factor Z in here. Now, if we solve for the pressure for both of them, pressure of a perfect gas or an ideal gas is NRT over V, and that of a real gas would be NRT over V with this compression factor here. And we can compare the pressures of a perfect and a real gas by saying that the pressure of a real gas is equal to the compression factor Z, that's Z right here, times the pressure of the perfect gas, which is NRT over V right here. Now we're going to look at two scenarios. The first one is under constant volume and temperature. And we're going to imagine we have a gas in a container fitted with a piston, and now it's in equilibrium right here, where we have the same pressure, 1 atm, on the inside as we do on the outside. And for a perfect gas, we can say that the compression factor Z is equal to 1. If there's a 1 right here, it's just nRT over V. That's the same as the pressure of a perfect gas. Now, if Z is less than 1, let's say 0.9, then the pressure is going to be less. If Z is 0 0.9, Perfect gas has a pressure of 1 atm, so the pressure of a real gas would be 0 0.9 atm. We have a different pressures here on the inside and the outside, so we have to hold this piston with, with something so that it doesn't go down. On the other side, if the compression factor is greater than 1, say 1.1, if Z is 1.1, perfect gas pressure is 1, then the pressure of a real gas will be 1.1, and we have to hold this piston from going up. Now let's look at both of these scenarios with Z less than one and greater than one. If it's less than one, there's lower pressure and there's lower pressure because there's less collisions with the container per time compared to a perfect gas. Why are there less collisions? There's less collisions because there's intermolecular forces. There's attractive forces that are dominant between the particles. These particles have a little bit of stickiness between themselves. So there's more collisions kind of with themselves compared to the outside than a perfect gas. If we remove this pin, then the volume is going to go down so that this pressure increases until we achieve the same pressure as the outside. We're now at 1 atm, the same as a perfect gas, and we're in equilibrium again. Uh, well, we were with the pin in, but now we're with equilibrium with the pin out. Now, in this case, there's a greater pressure on the inside, and there's greater pressure, that means there's more collisions with the container compared to the perfect gas. And there's more collisions because repulsive forces are dominant. And if repulsive forces are dominant, they kind of repel each other so that they collide with the container more often than this perfect gas. If we remove the pin in this case, the volume's going to go up. And it's going to go up until these two pressures are the same. As it goes up, the pressure goes down. We now have the same pressure in each case. We now have another scenario where here we have pressure and Temperature is constant. We're assuming constant temperature, and we now have the same pressure. If we define a couple equations, uh, the molar volume is the total volume divided by the amount of moles, and our compression factor Z, the main equation for it, is the molar volume of the real gas divided by the molar volume of the perfect gas. So if we look at the perfect gas and we say that the molar volume is Vm, perfect, then if the compression factor is less than 1, the molar volume of this real gas is going to be less than the molar volume of the perfect gas, assuming that everything, uh, pressure and temperature are constant. We can see the molar volume is less, same number of moles, but the volume's lower. On the other side, if the compression factor is greater than one, then the real gas is going to have a higher molar volume uh, because of those repulsive forces. And I Got summarized a nice little table for you. I linked this in the description if you want to take this and just print it out, steal it, use it. Hopefully it helps in your courses. If Z is less than 1, then attractive forces are dominant, like London dispersion, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, that sort of thing. The pressure will be lower than a perfect gas under constant temperature and volume. This is the first scenario we looked at. If we have constant temperature and pressure, then the molar volume will be less than the perfect gas. This is the second scenario that we looked at. And another scenario which we didn't look at, but maybe you can figure it out and conceptualize it after these first two scenarios. If we have a constant volume and a constant pressure between the real and the perfect gas, 
then the real gas will have a higher temperature. It has to have a higher temperature to maintain the same pressure of a perfect gas. A higher temperature overcomes those attractive forces so that we have greater pressure against the container than it normally would have. If Z is greater than one, then repulsive forces are dominant and it'll have a greater pressure than a perfect gas under constant temperature and volume. And the second scenario, if we have constant temperature and pressure, the molar volume will be greater, right? The you move the pin, the volume goes up. And in that another scenario that we didn't look at, if we have constant volume and pressure, the temperature of the real gas has to be lower. It has to be lower to maintain the same pressure of a real gas. We've got to lower the temperature to slow those molecules down because they repel each other and have this tendency to kind of collide with the container more often compared to the perfect gas. Now the compression factor is also a function of the pressure. As a gas expands or is compressed, the compression factor is going to change. If the gas is expanded so that there's lower pressure, there's less crowding between the particles, attractive forces are dominant, the compressure factor is often less than one. However, if the gas is compressed and there's under high pressure, then the particles are crowded and repulsive forces are dominant and the compression factor is greater than one. Now, the compression factor is a function of pressure, but also the molar volume as well. And these two parameters can be modeled using the virial equation of state, uh, where it's very similar to the equation that we saw before from the ideal gas law, except with the compression factor built into here. This series is the compression factor, and it describes how the compression factor is a function of the molar volume. And these parameters are often derived empirically or through experiment. We could also look at the virial equation in this form, in which the compression factor is a function of the pressure, which is the one that we're going to look at a little bit more closely uh, right now. So we'll move this up over here. And if we look at a graph of compression factor versus pressure, if the compression factor is one, then it's acting as a perfect gas uh, most of the time. And the curve for a real gas, it's gonna go, generally it goes below Z and then above, but it's gonna change based on the pressure. If the temperature is higher, the compression factor will change as well. So the compression factor is also dependent on the temperature. So you might see another curve kind of like this. And when the compression factor is greater than one, we have repulsive forces dominant. So at these pressures and greater, then we have repulsive forces dominant. Uh, but under lower pressures, we have attractive forces that are dominant. And you may notice that both of these go to one at zero pressure. All gases, all real gases approach a compression factor of one as the pressure goes to zero. And the reason for that is that we don't have to worry about repulsive forces and attractive forces at zero pressure because those particles are just too far apart to interact. Uh, and just maybe a note, you could impress someone at a party that see how the slope of these curves, it's not zero, right? It's not asymptotic at one, but the slope will change at zero pressure depending on the temperature. And the temperature in which the curve has zero slope at zero pressure, that's called the boil temperature. So it acts, ideally acts as a perfect gas for a larger range of pressure. You may learn in class that gases act more ideally or more perfect under low pressures and high temperatures. Well, this is why right here, if we have low pressures, then we're approaching Z equal to one. And under high pressures, we have a flatter slope. So it'll act, ideally over a longer range. Uh, just note that this curve doesn't look like this for all gases. Some gases like helium hydrogen always have a compression factor greater than one. So it'll still have this general curve, but we won't dip below the one. Okay, so to summarize the compression factor and real gases, real gases have intermolecular forces, perfect gases do not. The compression factor Z, it's like an add-on to the perfect ideal gas law to model real gas behavior. So we have the ideal gas law here, except with the compression factor put into it. And the equation for our compression factor is the molar volume of the real gas divided by the molar volume of what it would be if it was perfect. And the compression factor depends on the type of gas and the conditions. So the pressure, their molar volume, and the temperature. And we may 
create equations of it using pressure or molar volume or even temperature as well uh, in this way. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I got a cheat sheet down below in the description, so you're welcome to take it, steal it, print it out, put it on your wall. And I've got tons of other work through example problems with the compression factor and many, many, many videos on thermodynamics and other aspects of chemistry, physics, and math. So I hope you got some value from it. Good luck on your midterms, your quizzes, your final exams, and all that stuff. Hang in there. I know thermo is not the easiest course, but you don't need to be a genius to get through it to succeed. You just